morning. Okay, for some time we have been talking about word formation processes and we have seen that in all languages of the world, no matter how developed or how backward it is called. It may be a language without a script and it may be a language with lots of written literature. All languages have some word formation processes which include basically two elements. They use existing words to make new words or they use particles, parts of the word, put them together and get the new word. It can be word plus word, it can be word plus affix, a part put together. In the language of morphology, we call them independent morpheme that can occur by itself, that is a word or an affix, a dependent morpheme which must be tagged to something else. In the language of morphology, we have basically two kinds of morphemes. One is free or independent and the other is bound or attached, affixed, call it what you like. And I gave you the example yesterday, you can have a word like person and you add all to it in English and you get personal, a new word. If you analyze the structure of this word, there, here is a free morpheme or an independent morpheme and it carries a bound morpheme and gives a new word. It can also be word plus word, it can be person and it, it, it can be <coughs> Uh, anything else, any, any uh, uh, other word, person undesired, okay, a person of emine or you know uh, some other noun or some other uh, adjective. This affix can also occur at the beginning of the word. So, yesterday I gave you something like this. you have connect, but this bound morpheme does not occur at the end of the word, it occurs here and you have disconnect. Okay. Basically, in all languages of the world, we have morphemes, some of which are free, others are bound, bound morphemes are limited in number free morphemes are at least theoretically unlimited in number, they are an open class, you can have as many of them, no one knows how many any language has, there is no finite cap, final cap. We generally guess that English has about 550,000 words, we generally guess that Maithili on the other hand is, has only 75,000 words, but we cannot be too sure because this is an open class. Words keep dying, words keep getting born, but this is countable, definitely decisively countable. Today we will talk about this process, the process of affixation, how many kinds of affixes are there, how they behave. We will take examples from English, but it will be wonderful if you simultaneously found worked out examples from the languages, other languages that you know, preferably your mother tongue. Please pull out your notebook, your pencil. Actually, I have so far spoken only about two kinds of affixes. I have said, you know, bound morphemes or affixes are, can either come at the end of the word or either can come at the beginning of the word. In other words, I have said they are I have said they are either suffix, 
they come at the end of word. Those of you who know Sanskrit would recognize it. Do you know what the Sanskrit word for this? Please write. Upasarga. Up. I will use phonetic transcription. Upasarga. Suffix. Okay. And those that come at the head of the word in English they are known as prefix. In Sanskrit we call them what is this? Pratyaya. Come on, make a mistake. Pratyaya. Yeah, pratyaya. Pratyaya. It comes in the beginning of the comes at the beginning of the word, but this is only one kind of language, Indo-Aryan languages. There are languages in Africa, there are languages in Southeast Asia, there are languages in North America, you know, uh, what the languages that people whom we call Red Indians spoke. They also have things like infix, where they insert something, you know. Infix is something that can be inserted in the middle of the word, not at the end of the word, not at the beginning of the word, but it can be inserted. Look at the example of infix. This is from a language spoken in Southeast Asia in one of the islands of Philippines. They are not very common, but they are there. As far as linguistic theory is concerned, it does not matter how many languages have them, but what is important is that natural languages make new words out of existing words or affix plus affix. This affix can be, can you close your eyes and tell me how many kinds of affixes can there be? Uh, uh, B text particularly, please tell me how many kinds of affixes? There can be prefix, there can be infix and there can be suffix. suffix. Once again, how many kinds can there be, please? Three, Three kinds. What are they? Prefix. Prefix, prefix, infix and suffix. Do not look at the screen. Give me examples of prefix and suffix. Please write it on your notebook and then share with me, please. Everybody, please do that. In this case, you see this language, ficas. You know, you can, you, you know, you can continue to listen to me, but also find examples if you like. In this language, you see the words on by the left hand column, they are either noun or adjective, but once you insert the infix, they become verb. Can you tell me, can you look at the screen for a moment and tell me what was the infix here? Um, correct. Um is the infix here. Diff different languages have you know, there are languages in Africa, there are languages in North America and others uh, which use infix. Okay, please, uh, can you give me some, at least one example of a prefix and a suffix. I am going to mail these slides to you. Uh, Ashwin, I am also going to mail these slides to you. So, you really do not have to copy it, but think of similar things from say let us say Malayalam. You know Malayalam has lots of them like Sanskrit, okay. many other languages Hindi, Urdu, you know in Indian languages have lots of them, no less than uh, English. Okay. Think of some of them. So, these are prefixes you know you have a uh, can you give me a word with a? Uh? A, a, a particular word, then prefix a uh is added there and it becomes another word. Sorry? Atheist. Atheist, yes. Somebody from this side, please. Come on, make a mistake. Impossible. No, impossible is im. Give me something with a. Uh. A prefix. Yeah, cross and across. Right? Something else? Around. Around, round and around, yes. So, that is a, can you give me something with B? B E? Different. 
they are come and become, yes, beloved. Some, one more? Yeah, bewildered. Okay, that's really be, a bewildering word. Come, Deepika, can you give me something? Yeah, that's somebody else already took it away. You're late. Right. Below. Yeah, below, low and below. Okay, you have, you have lots of words with B, actually very productive. Can you give me something with D, D, E? Asmita, can you give me something with D? Can you please capture my friend? Yeah. <laughs> Talk to camera, please. Or ignore the camera. Talk to me. Sorry? Devoid. Ah, devoid. Okay, something else. Come on, please. Yeah, denote. What, another? Shredi, give me something. What? Ah, you know, come, come in better shirt in the studio, please. Okay. Great, degrade. Yeah? Denote. Denote. Can you loud, can you speak louder? Denote. Yeah, denote, somebody said that. Give me another word. Degrade. Somebody has said that also. Denomination. Yeah, denomination, yes. Nomination and de you know, it's again a very productive word formation divide, device. Can you give me something with M, Mahesh? E M? M power. Another word, please. Come on. Embed. What did you say? Em emphasis. Emphasis, but what is with the word without M there? If you take away M, E M, then w would the word stand? So, so that's I thought you case. asked about uh, N, not M. I said N circle. Oh, N circle. Yes, M N. Yes, circle and N circle. That's a good. That's a good. That's a very good example. We have lots with il, im, in, pre, re, un. You know, they are, they are highly productive word formation devices, tool. Look at some suffixes. Can you give me an, can you give me a word with, which takes a, r for suffix? In a spelling, it is a, r. Circular. Ah, circle and circular. Good. Another? Singular. Single and singular. Yes, singular. lovely. <laughs> Yet another? Muscular. Muscular. Okay. Can you give me some example of prefix from your mother tongue? Earlier, you know, like I said, a, uh, b. Yes, another. Anju, can you give me something from Malayalam? An example of a prefix? Sambal, asambal, asambhavam. Okay. Sogyama, asogyama. Okay, can you give me something? Or of suffix from. Okay, yes, please. Ahimsa. Yeah, ahimsa and ahimsa or ahimsa. Can you give me something from Bengali, Asmita? Ashen, something from Malayalam? Azar? Okay. Asmita, can you give me something from Bengali? Non-Sanskrit word from Bengali. Don't give me Bhadra or Bhadra. Okay, we have them. You know, it's only that readily because you have not been thinking about these things. They don't come to your mind. Maybe you know we Rajesh and I have been struggling with this, so we can give you some examples. But the point is, it is there, and you know it. That is how you are able to speak your mother tongue. You know, it can be a wonderful uh, thing for you to sit down, take it as an assignment and make a list of these prefixes, these suffixes and find words with them and see. Do they behave alike? Do they impact the words to which they are attached in the same way? You know, these are the questions you can ask. Actually, no change, no natural process leaves the particles unchanged. There is some change. You might call this change significant. You might call this change 
insignificant, but there is definitely some effect of some of these things. Affixes for the way they work, you know, can be basically defined, classified. You know, so far I have told you how they are attached. So, I said there is free morpheme and there is bound morpheme. What is a free morpheme? A free morpheme is one which occurs by itself. It does not require another thing. So, person is a free morpheme, connect is a free morpheme, but all is not, this is not. In the Filipino language we saw just now, um is not, okay? they, are, they are bound they must be attached to some other world. So, that is one way of looking at it, how do they behave. There may be another way of looking at it. What function they perform and from that point of view, we classify them into these two categories. We say in some books you may also find this inflection and in some other and the other kind is derivation. Basically, what they do is these affixes, inflectional affixes give you information concerning, please write number, gender, person, case, tense, degree of adjective, you know. Say for example, when you say John paints, when you say John paints, then this is an inflectional affix. Okay? Are you with me? I am talking about something totally, totally abstract now, please. Okay? Kindly give me all your attention for the next 5 minutes. When you have a sentence like John paints, then paint has two morphemes. This is the free morpheme and this is bound morpheme. So, okay. This gives you the meaning what John does. What does this do? This bound morpheme is inflectional morpheme. It tells you that the person who is doing it is a third person, a singular number. Okay? If this sentence were to be written in Hindi, you could have said John, I will use phonetic transcription. Please copy and check with me. John paint karta hai. Okay. We know John, we know the meaning of the word paint, we know what is this doing, ta in hai. It tells us that the painter is a man, not a woman, it is masculine gender. It's, it tells you about the gender of the subject, it tells you about the tense. When is this happening? In the past or in the present? Those who know Hindi, please. It, it is happening in the present. So, inflectional morphemes tell you, please write, tell you about number, gender, person, case, tense, degree of adjective. You know, you can say Mary is pretty, you can say Mary is prettiest. You are still describing Mary, but you are describing her in superlative degree. So, inflectional morpheme gives you the following things. It gives you number, number in the sense of singular plural. 
Okay? It gives you person, first person, second person, third person. Professor Rajesh will be talking about beginning next week, he will be talking about sentence grammar and he will tell you about more about inflectional morpheme, how sentences need to be sensitive to these aspects of the noun and the verb, agreement between noun and verb. You cannot have a singular noun and a plural verb, you cannot have a plural noun and a singular verb. So, these indications, these constraints, these relationships are shown by inflectional morpheme. You know, they can be many, but some of them are number, then please write person, first person, second person, third person, okay. gender, masculine, feminine. In some languages, you also have neuter gender. Okay. In some languages, you have more than two numbers. In many languages, you have only singular and plural. In some languages, you have no singular, no plural. Okay. In God's world, as Shakespeare said, there is lot of variety, much more than perhaps we understand even at this point. But there can be singular, plural or there can be dual. There can be first person, second person, third person or it can be masculine, feminine and neuter, neuter gender. Okay. Or case, are you the speaker or are you being spoken to? Okay. Are you the painter or are you being painted? We, can, we, ha we have said John paints, but if John is the object, how shall we write it? Come on Srinidhi or anybody from you know the class, please tell me. If John is the object, how shall we write? In this case, John is subject. John paints something, but if John were the object, then we will say John is painted. being painted. Then you know this S changes to ED. So, that is a change in case. What was subject becomes now object. All of these relationships, what we call in other words syntactic relationships, their relationship with other words and changes because of these relationships. So, number, person, gender, case, in the case of verb you can have tense, past or present or whatever or you can have voice, active, passive, you can have aspect, simple, perfect. Okay. Uh, Dr. Rajesh will tell you about some of these boring things, I, please pardon me, I, I won't go into those areas. Okay. So, you know, Similarly, for gender, sorry, for adjective, you have degrees of adjective. IIT students are not just bright, we like to think they are the brightest. I wish that were true. Okay. Uh, we will delete these things, please. Right. <coughs> okay. So, you know, you are still describing the student, you are still, still using an adjective, but you are using the adjective in the highest degree or you are using the adjective in the lowest degree, when you are very angry with the institute particularly after quiz, okay, you say IIT is the worst institute, but when you walked in you said IIT is the best institute, you are still describing a particular object, a particular person, but the degrees have changed. So, all of these things are inflectional morphemes. Am I am I clear to you? Yes or no, please. Yes, sir. Sure, Sahitya. Okay, right. Oh, there may be derivational morphemes that extend the meaning of the word. Say, for example, you have connect and you use disconnect. Now, you have extended the meaning of the word, it is the opposite of connect. You can have do and what is the opposite of do? Undo. Okay. Or you have do and you are looking for, you want to make a subject out of it, so you say do plus er. What do you get now? Doer. You have drive and you want to make a new word for someone 
who lets you sit at the back seat and listen to music, but does the boring work for you, then you know you add ER and you say driver. These are derivational affixes. Basically, you know, I cannot give you very you know uh, highly objective, logically testable, unfalsi sorry, falsifiable definition, but by and large inflectional morphemes give you information about syntactic function of the words, derivational affixes extend the meaning of the word, they give you in that sense new words. Okay? Let us move on, am I clear so far? Am I clear so far? Anju, do you understand me? No? Okay. Uh, I think in that case, we perhaps we will have another conversation. Right. So, let us move on. Let us look at, you know, I am not going to talk about inflectional affixes at any length. I, 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 I hope uh, Professor Rajesh will tell you more about them when he talks about sentence grammar. Let us look at derivational affixes. Okay. Derivational affixes can have two kinds of effects. Can I take it off? Derivational effects can change the category of the word a verb can become noun, you know, category changing. What will be the opposite of category changing? The opposite of category changing will be category unchanging, category retaining. Okay. So, for example, when you say, when you have a word like connect, is it noun or verb, what is it? Is it noun or verb or adjective, what is it? Is a verb, but when you add this to it, what is it now? Is it still a verb or something else? It is still a verb. So, you know it is not category changing, it is category retaining, it does not change the category. Okay. But now look at another, this is connect and you add i o n to it. What is it now? No. It was verb, now it is a noun. Okay. Connect was verb, connection is noun. So, from that point of view, from the effect point of view, okay, I told you I will be talking about something abstract, please give me your attention. From the effect point of view, you can have two kinds of derivation. I am not talking any longer about inflectional morpheme, I am talking now only about derivational morphemes. There can be two kinds of derivational morphemes, some which change the category of the word to which they are attached like connect and connection. Connect is verb, when you add i o n it becomes noun. So, connection is a category, i o n is a category changing affix, but in, in, in a word like connect and disconnect connect is verb, you add this okay, and it still remains verb, this is category retaining. Look at some examples I have given you on the screen. Okay. Danger, it is a noun, but when you add e n to it, what does it become now? It becomes a verb now, it is in danger, but when you add and when you add o u s to it, what does it become now? It becomes an adjective now, dangerous, okay. further category change. Add L y to it, what is it now? Dangerously. Okay. 
can you think of some similar word from your mother tongue? Can you think of similar words from your mother tongue, please? Okay, anything. No? Okay, think of it. I am coming to it. I am giving you warning. After 5 minutes, you know, we will do that exercise. But look at other words. Okay? Right? Look at a word like profit. Verb, but when you add e, sorry, when you add eer, profiteer, it is still a verb. Profit can also be a noun, but you know when you add a b l e to it, this is now an adjective. What is it now? Profitable. It's a profitable business. Okay. How do you know it's an adjective? You can say you can attach degree. You can say more profitable. You can say most profitable. Okay. What is do? Noun or adjective or verb? Verb. What is the adjective out of it? Out of do? Do not look at the screen and give me the adjective of do. Make an adjective out of do. Please do not look at the screen and make one. Doable. Okay. Or in some cases, you can have one or two others. The point is all of these affixes, limited affixes give you unlimited output. Okay. I, will, I will now ask you not to look at the screen or if you tell me I can switch it off. I will give you full two minutes, please. Note these prefixes on your notebook. D, dish, il, im, in or miss or pre or re. Take any two or three of these and make words with them and see if they change category, if they keep category. Do you understand me, please? Okay, can I repeat myself? Take any of these prefixes, take any of these prefixes, d, re, miss, pre, il, im, in one or two others, you know, as I have given on this screen. Can you make words using these prefixes plus some other word and then ask yourself if these prefixes change the category of that word. Does verb become noun, noun become adjective, adjective become verb. Okay? Do that please in English first, then we will do it for our mother tongue. Everybody please do it individually first and then you know you can consult your friend sitting next to you. You can take you know two to three minutes please. If you are getting the same category then think of words with m n e m e n make new words with e m e n and see if they keep the category or change the category. Think of please you know these are these these are exercises in thinking you know everything you know entire grammar of the languages of the world is inside your head all you have to do is to take it out of the freezer and make use of it okay please give me some examples with e m e n Srinidhi, can I see your notebook? Yes. Huh? Okay, so they are all category retaining. Uh, no, do not in form are opposite, like they are not. The meaning opposite, but yeah, but syntactic function is the same. They are verb, they remain a verb. Yeah, okay. So we call them category, category changing. changing. Give me, sorry, category retaining. I'm sorry. Give me category changing. Uh, with many, make any other. Use e m e and yes, with prefixes also you can get category changing. Like you know, make a verb, make a word with e m e n. Power and verb. Ah. But they are both verbs. No, they are not. Is power a verb? Look up your dictionary. Power 
can be a word. Power okay, can be a word. Yeah, that's an. But it can also be a noun. Can power not be noun? Yeah. Okay. Look up your dictionary. You have the dictionary on the mobile phone. Okay. Okay. So power is noun, and empower now is a verb. A verb. Okay. Give me something like that. Okay. What did you get? For category changing, retaining. Yeah, speak to the camera please. You know, give the verb and then give the new word. Give the old word and then give the new word. Yeah. Talk to the camera please. They are both verbs. So it is category retaining. Lovely. Can you give me some example? Side noun, inside preposition, category. Yeah, side and inside, yes, they are still. The, you know, side is noun and inside is what? Preposition. Yeah. Preposition, yes. Okay. Courage, discourage. Ah, what are they both? Both are verbs. Is courage a verb? No, no. Ah, courage is noun. So, discourage is now verb. verb. Does it retain the category? Does it change the category? Change in category. It changes the category. Please. Yes, base and debase. Yeah, base is a noun and d base is a verb. So, it is category changing. Camera. <laughs> okay. Generate, regenerate. Uh, they are both verbs. So, what would you call them category changing or category retaining? Lovely. Liberate and Okay, yeah, that is a very good idea. You know, yeah, do they come from the same? Do you think liberate and deliberate have anything common in meaning? But it is a very good example. Okay. So, what is crust? Noun. Can you talk louder? I want you know your voice to be captured. And then crust is verb. Okay. Yeah, they are both verbs. So, they are category retaining. Mahesh? Okay. Yeah, cycle can also be a verb, but anyway, you have a good example. Okay. Hema? Yeah, but do they have anything common in meaning? You know, so we, we generally, you see they, these are the problem areas, you know, you can do a term paper in this, you can take a research project, how you know. We can we call them the same word or different word? Yes. Both are verbs. What are your examples? Yeah, what are they both? Place is noun, place can also be a verb. Yeah. I would much rather have it as verb. So place and misplace. But if it is a noun, then it is category changing. Yes? So, literate and illiterate. Yeah, right. What are they both? Both are adjectives. They do not change category. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, what are they both? Adjectives. Yeah. The test is can you get much more most? Can you say most boy? Can you say much boy? Can you say more boy? You can say boyish. Okay, so you know, so if it is an adjective, it, it will take more most. Okay. Anju, did you give something? Come. Yeah, not easy. There is nothing like marking. But you can make one. Okay, build and rebuild. Okay. Right, you know, we can go on. Maybe you know after Professor Rajesh finishes and if we have time, I will come and talk further about some constraints in this area, how we can. But there are, there are derivational suffixes, there are derivational prefixes which keep the category of the word, which change the category of the word. Okay? Let us talk about some of the suffixes. Ian noun becomes some you know there are some ions which can still keep okay 
the category. Say for example, when you say Canada, it is a noun and Canadian is still a noun. He is a Canadian. You can also make it an adjective. You can say this is a Canadian product okay, or it, it is more Canadian or most you know it is. Okay, Let us look at Okay, before we go to Hindi, can you complete this table please? Everybody please do it on your notebook, complete this table. You see, I will first show you the earlier table. The noun, verb is account, adjective accountable and adverb accountably. Similarly, we have noun, reality, what is its verb? realize. What is its adjective? Real. And what is the adverb? Really. Okay. Doubt. What is the adjective of doubt? Rasmita? Doubtful. Doubtful. Okay. What is the adverb of friend? Hema? What is the adverb of friend? friendly. Okay. What is the adjective of nation? National. Okay. Please complete this table. Exactly 60 seconds. Your time begins now. I want to see who does it first and maybe I will have a book as a gift for you. The one who does all the entire table correctly in 60 seconds. Okay. You can take another 30 seconds and raise your hand when you finish it, when you complete it. Okay, please. What is the noun of personal person? Okay, let us do it together now, please. Stop individual work. Please join me. What is the noun of personal person? What is the verb of personal personify or personalize? Personify will be better. What is adverb? personally. Okay, what is the noun of argue? Argument. Argument. What is the adjective of argue? Argumental. Argumentative. Yeah, or you can say arguable. Arguable. Sorry? Argumentative. You can say that, yes. Uh, better perhaps closer home will be arguable. Okay. What is the adverb of argue? Arguably. Okay. What is the adjective of courage? Courageous. Courageous. What is the verb of courage? Encourage. Encourage. What is the adverb of courage? Courageously. What is the noun of large? Largest. What is the noun of large? Large. 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 Enlarge. What is the adverb of large? Largely. What is the 
adjective of beauty, beautiful verb, adverb, beaut adverb, beautifully. Okay. Noun is error. What is the verb of error? What is that? That is the adjective Asmita, God, your school teacher will commit suicide. No? Okay. I will mail her today. What is the adverb of error? What is the adverb of error? Erroneously. And what is the verb of error? To err. Okay. To err is human, to forgive divine. Do you remember that phrase? Okay. And we have these things in all languages, Hindi. I have taken some examples from Hindi. See prefix, chut, achut, tithi, atithi. These are category retaining, but look at category changing. Okay. Bara and barai, those who know Hindi. Can you give me something similar in Malayalam? Please. Can you work out these examples from your mother tongue and check with the ones I am giving you. Maybe we will have another class on this when we meet next. Thank you. Have a good day. My